Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday night Bible study. It's great to connect in this way, and um, I'm really excited about what we're doing on Wednesday nights here in October. We're gathering together on Wednesdays, doing family devotionals in the auditorium, and then Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, starting in the first Wednesday in November, we're going to have our adult class in the auditorium and kids' classes uh, throughout the building. So it's a great time. Uh, Bible studies are really amping up. And I've had some conversations recently with some people who have made it um, clear that they've been struggling with studying the scriptures with their family outside of the Sunday opportunity on Sunday morning during sermons. And now the devotional things that we're going to have going on on Wednesday nights. And, and what, they're, what they know, and we all know this, is that the, the majority of education when it comes to God's Word has to take place at home. It can't just be a, a Sunday sermon and maybe one Bible class a week here at the church building. That isn't anywhere near enough to help grow a, a young person into a knowledge and understanding and a strength spiritually in Jesus. It just isn't. And it isn't enough for an adult to continue to grow in faith and strength and knowledge and connection and love of Jesus. It just isn't enough. And so there, there, there should be a passion and there should be a desire. And I think there is for a majority of people who, who are professing to be Christians and connected to the Lord's church. But there seems to be this rhythm and tendency to, to not really go into and seek after studying God's Word on a daily basis, particularly with family members, so that there's this unification of effort within a family unit to grow into the image of Jesus. And so having said that, I thought tonight would be a pretty good idea. It'd be a good idea. I think it is, at least. For me to just give you some some helpful tips and and um, maybe get the ball rolling, to study in in um, a certain direction, and to do that, I thought, well, let's talk about Peter, the apostle Peter. And so the first thing I want us to talk about then in the study idea is that let's get to know at least one of the people. And I don't even like to say they're characters. I mean, these are, these are folks that really existed in history that did amazing things that we write about or that we read about in Scripture. And Peter is, is an amazing figure. <laughs> and because of his characteristics and his character, because of the things that we know about who he was and who he is, there are great things that we can learn about us. I think it's important for us to, to choose certain people in Scripture, historical figures, and study out their life from the very first time that we're introduced to them to the very last time that we see them mentioned. And we can watch with these human beings, their flaws, their strengths, their weaknesses, the challenges that they face. A great Bible study is to study out people in Scripture. Because we can, we can relate so much to them because in many ways we're so much like them. And we can then be encouraged by them, challenged by them. And then we can also be embarrassed by some of the things they do because we go, oh man, I've done that or I'm doing that too. So a great study is to study out people of Scripture. And then, if that particular person has been used by God, led by God, to actually write things in Scripture, then there's another avenue that we can follow. We can follow not only their life and the things that they've done, the characteristics that they have, but then we can also follow the words that they were inspired to write. Knowing more about who they are, we can get a deeper flavor into the words that they pen. So, Peter... Well, who was he? Well, well, we read in Scripture that in, first, or in John chapter 1, we see that, well, Peter was a fisherman. And 
then that can lead us to studying a little bit about first century fishermen and what life was like for them and how challenging it was for them. And we know that Peter didn't have this tremendous um, education. He, he wasn't a scholar when it comes to the educational field. He's, he's, just, he's a family guy. It's the family business. He's a, he's a hard-working fisherman. But then we also know that he has street smarts then too, right? He's got this, this, this really strong um, physical essence about him because of what he does professionally. He has this, this, this drive to succeed because fishermen had to go through some dry seasons of not catching all that much, but he had to press through and work hard to, to make a living and provide for his family. So those are some of the characteristics we know about who he is. We also know that he's a married guy. Um, in Mark chapter 1, verse 30, it shows that Peter was a married man. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I believe it's verse 5, it shows that Peter also traveled with his wife. And so we have that kind of relationship that we see between Peter and his wife and how he keeps that family unit together. When you read and study the life of Peter out, you find out that he's an extremely emotional person. He's very reactionary, very passionate, and sometimes he's passionately wrong. But we also find that Peter's a correctable person, that he has that softness about him, that he isn't just going to say, hey, this is just the way I am, and that's just the way it's going to be. That's not Peter. He's also moldable. Well, how do we know? Well, when you look at him near the end of the life of Jesus before the cross. Peter says, hey, listen, Jesus, I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm going to fight for you. No matter what, you, you can rely on me. I, I'd never deny you. And Jesus says, yeah, yeah, you will. And our Lord gets arrested, and they confront Peter and say, hey, aren't you one of his disciples? And we've studied this out, right? Peter says, ah, no, I don't know who he is. In a moment of challenge before the cross of Christ, Peter well, he folded under the pressure. And I know we can relate to that. Can't we? We've folded under the pressure. When, when put to a place where, where we should profess Christ or speak out on behalf of him, and then we don't. But you see, Peter's correctable. Because after the resurrection of Christ, Jesus comes to Peter and he says, uh, Peter, do you love me? I want you to tend to my sheep. Do you love me? And Peter's hit right in his heart. And of course, he is corrected. And he responds to that correction. And he then, with great boldness, goes out and preaches the very first gospel sermon. And Jesus knew that about Peter. And, and think about how... Think about how good Peter must have been at delivering a message. Out of all the apostles, out of all the people that Jesus could have selected to be the very first one to preach the gospel message, not only to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles, Peter must have been an amazing speaker with that great passion and great ability to articulate the truths of God. And Jesus knew that about him because in, we find in Mark chapter six or Matthew chapter sixteen that Jesus tells Peter, "Hey, listen, you're going to be the one to deliver that first gospel message." What an awesome guy he is, Peter, with all his flaws. And even after in Galatians chapter two, we see that Peter he folds under the pressure of between Jews and Gentiles and how he's viewed by a certain peer group. Read that. Study out Peter. You'll find. And then he's corrected by Paul. So, as we know these things about the character and characteristics about Peter, then we read what he's written. And, and, and we apply what we know about him to the words that we read. And, and then, so as we study the scriptures, let's study out a biblical figure from beginning to end. Let's know who, what their characteristics are. And you can find so many resources online 
to, to study out the scriptures. Or you can go to a concordance and just simply look up the name of the person and find those scriptures that is connected to the name of that individual. And study that person out with your family. Read the scriptures out and discuss the, the different situations that they're found in and the way that they react to different situations. And there are some tremendous people in scripture. Well, of course, there are some all there are some villains in the scriptures too, but man, there's some great, great studies to be had. And then find the Find the books that then God inspired some of these men to write and then study them out. So, for example, 1 Peter. We know that Peter wrote 1 Peter and 2 Peter. And, and so now the next thing is, is when you get into studying an actual letter or book that the, the person that you've been studying out writes, try to find out at least some of the basic information of the historical context that the letter was said in. So, for example, 1 Peter is said in the context of the scattering of, of Christians because of the persecution in Rome. And so we know that Christians being persecuted and, and tossed out of Rome and being chased down and, and ostracized, that, that Peter now is writing to a group of people like that to encourage them, to direct them, to guide them, to help them through their challenges. And by the way, I think that we can just step back for a moment and we all realize that that, that is the situation that we're really starting to begin seeing in our country. That the persecution is starting to grow, that the lines are being far, far more defined between those who are absolutely going to stand for the truth of Jesus Christ and those that have bought into a lie when it comes to Jesus, false religions, false teachings, and then those who are just simply agnostic or haters of God, those that are worldly and have the worldview. And so those lines are becoming far better defined in our world, which then I think is a benefit for us because it then really forces us to make that decision. Do I stand for Jesus in the midst of people who are turning away from him? And in doing so, look at the benefits and blessings of standing up for Christ. Because, because we'll stand out. <laughs> we'll, we'll be noticed as being different, which is a great opportunity to shine the light of Jesus. And when we do that, there are going to be folks who don't like it, which then gives us further opportunities to show who we are as we stand for Jesus. And you see, Peter is writing to a group of folks like that. They've, they've made their choice, and, and Peter wants to encourage them to continue to stand for their choice of Jesus in the midst of a world that's turning against God. So, having said that, I hope you have your Bibles out and open to 1 Peter chapter 1. Now, I don't know if we're going to really study this whole book together. I just thought it'd be really neat to, to introduce the idea of how to start discussions amongst your family. How to, how to just take the scriptures, read, just read, and find some of the very basic things that we find in the, in the verses, and then stop and talk about them amongst your family and friends within the context of truth. But we, this truth is to be applied in our lives today. So let's see how this happens. Let's see how this works. Let's just, let's just scratch the surface and, and, and give some topics of discussion for you and your family. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who reside as aliens scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, who are chosen, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by sanctifying work of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ, be sprinkled with his blood, may grace and peace be yours in fullest measure. Isn't that awesome? Just in these first two verses, think about how many things that you can just stop and talk about with your family as you study. I mean, Peter, the apostle, you can talk about 
his history. You can talk about where he came from. You can talk about his selection. You can talk about certain characteristics, certain life situations that Peter found himself in. And then discuss the beauty of him being chosen by Jesus, this man of imperfection but great passion, and how he is used by God in such an amazing way to deliver so many tremendous messages from God to us. You could also talk about how those that were scattered. You could talk about persecution today within the world around us. You can look up online specific real-life modern-day examples of Christians being persecuted. And then you can talk amongst your family about, so what will we do if we find ourselves in a situation where somebody confronts us? about our Christianity, or we're in school, the kids in school, and, 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 and the kids want to pray, or, or they want to take their Bibles and read their Bibles during lunch, and there may be, and there have been cases of persecution or mocking. How do we help and prepare our kids to let them know that reading God's truth and praying and not being ashamed of being a Christian, even in the schools, to have the strength to do what Jesus calls them to do in the midst of places like that, and how it's a benefit for a Christian to be a Christian in ways that Christ calls us to be in all life situations, so that it gives the opportunity for the lost to see the light of Jesus. So these are things that we could talk about, just based upon just the first two verses of 1 Peter. And then he talks about how we've been chosen. We've been selected by God for a specific purpose. He calls us that we are, we are aliens, that we're strangers in a strange land. What a great subject to talk about. And by the way, there are other scriptures that talk about us being aliens and strangers. What does that mean? Well, study it out. Talk it out with your family. That, that this world really isn't our home. And it's important for us to set that, that, have that mindset that our home is in heaven. That the language that we speak on this earth is different than the world language. That we don't use the curse words. That we don't use the profanity. That we don't lash out in hatred. That we speak the language of love and of Christ. That we quote scripture to people for the for the purpose of trying to help folks know the great wisdom that comes from the Word of God. That we are different, and it's okay. It's okay to be different. It's okay to know that we shouldn't be comfortable on this earth, that we yearn to go home to be with the Lord. You see, study things, and subjects to have open conversations with family, and to talk about the struggles of how we're connected to this world. Talk to the children about how they're so drawn to the things of this world. Talk amongst the adults how we've, been, how we've bought into the comforts of this world and desire those things, which then takes us away from the focus of actually being aliens and strangers and trying to help people on the journey to the home in heaven and not to the comforts of this world. You see, we see these things just in the first two verses of 1 Peter. And then he finishes off, verse 2, May grace and peace be yours in fullest measure. The thought of God's grace to the fullest measure, particularly for those of us who are being persecuted because we stand up and speak out for Jesus because you pray openly in the schools or in your place of work, because you, you're not ashamed of the gospel, you're not ashamed of God's word, so much so that you rely on his word as your guide even in daily business. And so you have your Bible ready while you're at work. You, you have your, your phone, your cell phone that has the Bible app and you read, or you quote, or you, you study when you have a moment and a break. And you share. You share God's wisdom with people as they open up at school, or at work, or in your community, or in your family, or family gatherings. And you share with them the wisdom of God to help them 
through the trials of life. Brothers and sisters, this is just an introduction to all these different ways that we can be inspired to study God's Word. So first off, find a character, find a historical figure in Scripture and follow them through. Just look up their name in a concordance and then read all the different stories, historical events that they were a part of. And then learn from what they did or what they didn't do. How they followed God or how they turned from God and then discuss those things. Great, great opportunities. And then if those people wrote something in Scripture, then read them. Read the letters. Maybe next week we'll get together and we'll We'll start in verse 3 of 1 Peter chapter 1 with the same approach, this more relaxed, open, discussing sort of approach of God's Word with other people, but first with our families. Oh, we need to study and read God's Word with our families. So let's not be afraid to do so. You don't have to have a tremendous depth of knowledge and scholarly approach to Scripture to read and study scripture at first, it will lead to a deeper understanding when you just begin with the way that we've begun the study tonight. So I know I tossed a lot out, but I hope I did in a way that at least something will, will inspire you to read God's word with your family this week. All right, you folks have a wonderful and blessed night, and we'll see you really soon. Let's close with a prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for blessing us with your amazing word. And, and Lord, I just pray that we're not afraid. We're not afraid to open up your, your word and, and have fear or shame because we, we don't know all that much and we're not great scholars but, and, and we feel ashamed that we haven't really been better stewards and students of your word. And so, Lord, I ask that all of us, those of us, who find ourselves in that place, that, that you help us, to, to forgive us, but, but help us to just have the, the courage to just open your word up and, and, and have you guide us into places that we can just openly receive. At first, the very basics and fundamentals of what you say, and then help us then to have the drive to want to dig deeper for those applications within our lives to help us become more like your son. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this family here at Waterford. What a blessing. And we ask that you continue to bless us in all that we do. It's through Christ we pray. Amen. You guys have a blessed night.